Hello and welcome back to Chase's Theater. Today I'll be continuing my Harry Potter series and we'll be taking a look at Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which was released in 2005 and saw another director change, this time being helmed by Mike Newell. And just a disclaimer here, I am only reviewing the movie, I am not comparing it to the book. So in this film, the stakes get raised. It's much darker than all the previous entries and Harry faces his biggest challenge yet, as someone enters his name into the Goblet of Fire, which is a magical goblet that chooses entrance into the Triwizard Tournament. This film feels like an expansion pack for the wizarding world, in a good way. So far in the Harry Potter series, we've really only seen Hogwarts, Hogsmeade, uh, Diagon Alley, Nocturne Alley, as far as wizarding locations go, which are all in England. And this film opens up with the Quidditch World Cup, an event in which thousands of witches and wizards attend from different countries. On top of this, this year, Hogwarts hosts students from two other wizarding schools for the Triwizard Tournament. And it's great to see the world expanded on in this way. It gives the viewer a sense of the wizarding world expanding beyond just England. There's also a publicist in the film, Rita Skeeter, who works for the wizarding world's mainstream newspaper, The Daily Prophet. She interviews Harry in one scene, and later on we see that she twists all his words around and really just creates lies in order to uh, create her own narrative story. And I really like this character. She is hilarious in the role, just to begin with. So it sets up some great comedic moments, but also sets up some story beats that will be played upon in later films. But most importantly, it gives younger viewers a glimpse at how messed up the reporting world is. And I really like this parallel to our own world, where we too cannot trust our mainstream news sources. On a different note, as you have already seen by the pictures, Everyone's hair is looking on point in the film. Unfortunately, this high point is never again reached in later entries of the series. So the Triwizard Tournament, it is fantastic. And in this Triwizard Tournament, Harry faces off in three deadly challenges, all of which are main centerpieces of the film. So that combined with the mystery as to who entered Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire makes for a very entertaining, intriguing story. So it's consistent with the previous three in that it has a great mystery to it. And the CGI of certain creatures in the film is nothing to scoff at. There are some really good pieces of CGI here. This film also continues the trend in this series of just being a visually pleasing film. Look at some of these shots. It's just a very nice film to look at. But going back to the story, this is sort of the turning point of the series. Everything before was much more kid-friendly and lighthearted, and it's really cool to see the characters grow up a bit in this one. There's a Yule Ball in which Harry and Ron are forced to find dates to. The entire Yule Ball part of the film makes for some great comedy. The entire Yule Ball part of the film is hilarious, it makes for some great teenage, relatable comedy, almost John Hughes-esque. And I remember seeing this film at an age close to the characters in the film and finding the whole puberty aspect so relatable. I was an opera teen just like them, who wasn't? And while this aspect of the film doesn't propel the story forward like the Triwizard Tournament does, it's equally, even if not more important, for the story as far as character development goes. But as I was saying, the Gobble of Fire changes the tone of the entire series, especially due to certain events that take place at the end of the film. There's a scene at the end that chokes me up every single time I watch it. It's truly heartbreaking and the acting out of all the characters involved here is great. Speaking of acting, Ralph Fiennes does an absolutely amazing job in his role. He is ruthless and makes me want more of him. The end of the film really shows off Mike Newell's strengths as a director. He really does darken the tone significantly and makes for a much more dramatic Harry Potter story than we've seen before. This is evident in the music score as well. It's no longer fun and whimsical, it's serious, dark, and sad. The end also contains possibly my favorite exchange of dialogue in the entire series. There's a scene when Harry, Ron, and Hermione are hanging out after a very heavy-hearted event, and Hermione, looking downtrodden, says, everything is going to change now, isn't it? You can sense the fear and doubt in her voice, and Harry grabs her shoulder and just, in the most optimistic tone, says, yes. Hermione then sort of snaps herself out of it and accepts that everything she knows is going to change. She has passed her inner doubts and fears and is now up for the challenge, as usual. It's a rare moment of weakness for Hermione, but is also a very relatable scene. 
especially in the times we're living in today. This is the best lesson of the film to me. We must pick ourselves up after tragedy and face life head on. Unfortunately, this brings to mind the most disappointing part of the movie. Uh, and I think it's easily the biggest issue with the film. And that's the very limited screen time we get with Harry, Ron, and Hermione, just hanging out and talking. There really needed to be more. Those moments of them just hanging out and talking, those are the binding moments of the film that just brings everything together, makes you care. In the book, The Goblet of Fire is about twice as many pages as The Prisoner of Azkaban is. And you can unfortunately really feel that in this film. There's just simply not enough runtime to squeeze everything that they needed in there. And they even cut some storylines just out of the movie entirely. There's such a focus on the Triwizard Tournament scenes, it leaves little room for much else, unfortunately. And don't get me wrong, those scenes are completely necessary. Those are the driving moments of the film. They're the most cinematic moments. But the film could definitely have benefited from an added 15 to even 20 minutes of screen time, maybe even more. And this claim is backed up by a lot of the scenes just feeling very jumpy. Scenes go from one thing to the next very quickly, which works in some instances, but in others feels unnatural. It's like we went from point A to point C. This also forces quite a bit of expositional dialogue to come out in the film, as there's a lot to explain, but little time to explain it. And I don't know if this is Mike Newell's fault, or if the studio just pressured and pushed him to make a shorter film than was necessary. So that's really the biggest issue of the film to me. It's very glaring that there's too much squeezed into a too little runtime. The music is also a major step down. Besides the music at the end of the film that I mentioned earlier, none of it is as memorable as the previous three entries. It feels much more just generic. Losing John Williams here was a mistake. But with all that being said, the highly entertaining nature of the story, the world building, the craft, the expansion, makes up for many of the film's shortcomings, like not enough runtime. And I'm going to give Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire a 9.5 out of 10. I personally would have liked to have seen an extended edition of Goblet of Fire come out. I wish that that would have been a thing. They actually made one for Chamber of Secrets. I wish that they had continued that trend. What do you guys think of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? Which Harry Potter film is your favorite? Please make sure to let me know in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you for my next review.